Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So as you all know, I'm really progressive YouTuber. I always think about new ideas and, you know, new ways to see things. I'm not like other rigid brain Linux YouTubers who always just stick to old school technology. I always look for modern things. That's why I'm using Hyperland too. So a few weeks back, I was tinkering with my blog and I realized there are some annoying things which was going on, which I was not liking and I wanted some solutions and I found some really neat solutions for that by myself. I wrote a complete program for that. So I just want to quickly show you, let me open my Firefox and I opened it quickly because as you can see, my Rofi is not configured well, so I don't want to show you that uh, even though I should. So if you go to blog.postwriter.com, if you have been following my channel for very long, you know, I had a blog running previously with, you know, which was written in Zola and many people who watch my channel started using Zola. Now, the thing about Zola is it is um, minimal. It is written in Rust. It is a good alternative of Hugo, which was written in Go. Zola is good and many people are using it. But I realized it was really hard to write CSS for Zola or do things in Zola. And there is this thing called tags, which I never understand. Tags and categories is something which always annoy me. And I don't even real, I don't think people even use that correctly or not. I don't know. So what I did is I realized that in modern times, instead of tags and categories, we have things like AI, which will recommend similar things. So why using something like tags when we can use uh, you know, like algorithms to recommend the best. So if you look at YouTube, you don't see tags there. Nobody uses tags. It's obsolete. We use like a, a an AI algorithm to recommend the next vlog or the next video. Okay. So I wanted to do something like this for myself. And I created this feature, similar blogs. And this is not something which I can do in Zola. Okay. So I did, did use Flask in order to do this. Now, the debate which we are going to have now is like, Oh, so are you using Python for your blogs? Is this blog is written in Python? This is so inefficient. Your blog is going to be slow and all of this similar blogs is going to get calculated with every request. So all of these things, um, you know, I realize is actually not a problem. Okay. So when I was writing my program, which is this one, uh, bookswriter.com slash blogs, let me just quickly clone this. So I have a proper readme in case if you also want to install it. And I, I realized that if I go to static directory, there is this stupid file I have uh, because of Emacs. So, I mean, it's my fault. It's not like Emacs fault. So let me click it, clone it. So my perspective uh, towards all these things change, okay? We always used to love static sites. We always used to, you know, like in Zola, when you write all your markdown blocks, you build it or something you do and create a directory which uh, which have all the files already but you can even do better. So I find it much better. So we have like this templates and all, let me just quickly make a virtual environment. Now, if you are not familiar with Python, you can even write something like this for your own in some other language. The only issue you are going to have is some libraries which I am using for, you know, suggestions like these suggestions here. So let me just quickly install requirements and you're going to see that what libraries I'm using. So as you can see, we got scikit-learn. Whoa, we are we are progressing, you know, this, these kind of things are coming in. So people who always love static stuff and they think like it's fast, I'm going to tell you that that's not exactly true. You can still get a lot of faster responses and minimal sites by using things like Flask. And you can even create better blocks without text or something. Some people might prefer text, but this is just me now. Okay. I'm a changed guy. I'm a progressive guy. I'm constantly changing. I'm evolving. Okay. All right. So let me just copy this and run it. Okay. So this is my blog. And uh, so how it works, if you want to use it, all you have to do is just do what I did just now and just go to blogs and just, you know, write your own markdown. So if I open some markdown, uh, it's quite similar. Okay. It's exactly the same. And you can do a lot there. You can change this because it's last. If you know Flask Python, you can actually just go nuts and do almost anything, whatever you want to do. Okay, so it just picks everything from this markdown directory. Now, the green part here is, the good thing here is, which I want to show you is, you might say, oh, all right, this is going to be really slow because e with each request, you know, if somebody requests to your blog, we are going to calculate these, uh, okay, let me go here. 
we are going to calculate like for example if this page is getting loaded so all of this is going to get calculated all right for every person but this and this is not required so if somebody opened this block like consumerism block it's the recommendations or similar blocks is going to be almost same as anyone else all right it's not going to change but here the thing is if i open this uh board which i have server.py so you can see actually you can't see because i haven't added it yet how to add patch in plants or uh, routes so the thing is, there is a feature in Flask which allows you to cache some route, all right? So it's not like every time somebody is going to request, we are going to create a new one second. So Flask caching, see, cache timeout. So for example, if there are thousand people coming to my vlog for, um, for like one hour, I can have a cache for one hour because the content is not going to change. I'm not going to add blog instantly so basically this cache thing is quick it's, it's like just like static all right it's basically like the response is going to get stored in some cache and i'm going to instantly give it to, to the user and instead of having so much files unnecessarily I, okay so just try to understand like for example the template is going to get generated only once and it will keep Okay, it will keep keep repeating itself for like thousand users for one hour. Okay, this can happen. So this little cache thing, this little patch here, just resolve all the problem of this static, oh sorry, dynamic nature which cause a slow response. All right. So this is great. This is great. Like I'm not calculating, you know, the similar blocks all the time. So I can just add it quickly and then there's no way I can show you right now because the, I don't know how to calculate the response time and all. I mean, I can figure it out, but this is a video, right? So let me show you the similar, um, the, the code for, you know, suggested.py. Okay, so this utils is basically some features which, you know, side features which I can use. So this code is something which I got from ChatGPT. I understand some of the, uh, you know, technicalities. Now, there are a lot of ways you can generate recommendations. Here, I don't actually... Actually, I learned it at that time, but right now I forgot. But there is this, you know, some course... I, I, I learned it. Trust me. I, I knew it, what all of this is doing, but I forgot it. Yeah, I learned about TFID factorizers. I learned it at the time, but I forgot. But it's quite interesting. I used activity. I learned it. And I know it is using some... Similar word algorithm. thing. So it's not like it's using some neural network. It is just calculating similar words somehow and just recommending. So for example, consumerism blog match with capitalism blog and economics blog and, you know, some countryside is better than that. So that's it for this video. If you want to use my blog, you can just go to github.com slash it. The link is in the description. You can use it for yourself and you can improve it. You can give me the patches for the cache and other things. And I would love to added in my program okay so thanks for watching